Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Mason Greenwood has been arrested on suspicion of rape and assault. Mason Greenwood has been suspended from Manchester United following allegations on social media. Prior to that, Manchester United issued a statement saying that Mason Greenwood would not return to training or play any matches until further notice. But reflecting on all of this, Mason Greenwood's career at Manchester United is over. I'm ashamed of Mason Greenwood. I think all Manchester United fans will be. Greenwood's only the age of 20. You know, still very, very young. Mason Greenwood has been a Manchester United player since the age of six. He made his senior debut for Man United back in 2019. And, you know, he's made 129 appearances for Manchester United. Greenwood has got a contract with Man United until June 2025. There's an option of a further year. So who is going to replace Mason Greenwood at Manchester United? Now I want to give you some news on Jesse Lingard. So apparently Jesse Lingard has agreed terms over a move to Newcastle. Newcastle are hopeful of finalising a deal for Jesse Lingard. Now Jesse Lingard's move to Newcastle looked to be dead in the water because of Manchester United's demands. You know, Manchester United were demanding a fifteen million loan fee. And earlier on in this window it said Jesse Lingard was keen on a loan move to Newcastle, but Manchester United would prefer to let him leave permanently this month. Uh, Lingard rejected an approach from Everton. Um, I've been hearing that West Ham want to re-sign him. At the second half of last season, Lingard endured a four-month loan spell with West Ham and he made an impact. Lingard doesn't get in our team, but he has been part of the club for a long time. He is no power academy in that. Lingard's out of contract at Manchester United in the summer. Manchester United have let quite a few players go out on loan in this January transfer window. Uh, Donny van der Beek has gone out on loan to Everton until the end of the season. I'm not sure if it's official yet. Everton are paying a loan fee and they will pay Donny van der Beek's full salary. But there is no option to buy as Manchester United intend on keeping Donny van der Beek for next season. Uh, Donny van der Beek is Frank Lampard's first signing as Everton manager. Don't forget Crystal Palace wanted Donny van der Beek, you know, they were in talks. But yeah, it's the right decision to loan van der Beek out. He'll get a lot more opportunities at Everton, you know. He didn't get enough opportunities at Manchester United. Manchester United got Donny van der Beek from Ajax. We got him for £40 million, with add-ons included. Manchester United paid £35 million up front. There's £5 million in add-ons. He's under contract to Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further year and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Not so long ago, Manchester United loaned Ahmad Diallo out. 
to Rangers until the end of the season. There's no buy option. Ahmad Diallo recently scored on his Rangers debut. Um, earlier on in this window, Manchester United loaned Anthony Martial out to Sevilla until the end of the season. Sevilla didn't pay loan fee and there's no option to buy, but Sevilla are paying Anthony Martial's full wages until June. And I think Manchester United also loaned Ethan Laird out. So there you go, and it is deadline day tomorrow. Are Manchester United going to make a signing before the transfer window closes? Manchester United want a midfielder because when Rangnick first came in, he identified Manchester United's midfield as a weakness. Obviously, Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham have been long-term targets for Man United. Uh, Boubacar Kamara, Man United have also been linked with him. Amadadou um, Haidar, we've been in for him. Uh, there's been reports coming out about Ruben Neves recently. Uh, there's been reports coming out today about Usman Dembele. It's said that Manchester United are willing to sign Usman Dembele. It initially said that Manchester United made an official €20 million Euro bid, but then it said Manchester United didn't make any offer. And Marcy said that Man United were in advance talks to sign Usman Dembele. But yet, um, Usman Dembele won't come to Manchester United. The club have said uh, the rumours regarding Usman Dembele to Man United are nonsense. You know, Manchester United have got very, very good players. We've also got inconsistent players as well. You know, obviously we've got Edison Cavani. He's a good player, is Edison Cavani. Uh, Cavani came on in the game against West Ham the other week and he got the assist for Marcus Rashford's winning goal. A lot of people said that Cavani was offside. Earlier on this season, Cavani had a minor injury. He had a couple of other injuries earlier on this season. Cavani will leave Manchester United in the summer because revert back to earlier on this season, Ralph Rangnick revealed that Edison Cavani wants to stay at Manchester United until the end of the season. Like I updated you earlier on today, it said that River Plate are considering a transfer for Edison Cavani in the summer to replace Julian Alvarez because Julian Alvarez is going to Man City. But he's not going to City till the summer because he's getting loaned back out to River Plate until the end of the season. Manchester United got Cavani on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. Last year, Cavani was linked with Barcelona. Um, obviously, it said Cavani agreed to join Barcelona on an 18-month contract. Juventus were also in for him, and last year, Cavani rejected a move to Boca Juniors. Uh, Marcus Rashford, he's not a great player. Um, he has enjoyed a lot of poor games since he had that operation on his shoulder, and a lot of United fans, including me, have said that Rashford has not been the same player since he had that operation on his shoulder. But to Rashford's credit, he's found some form in the last couple of games because Rashford scored the winning goal against West Ham the other week. He scored in the 93rd minute of stoppage time. And Rashford also came off the bench and scored against Brentford. Reflecting on that, that ended Marcus Rashford's three-month goal drought. So Rashford's got two goals in his last two games. Marcus Rashford has nearly made 300 appearances in all competitions. His contract at Manchester United expires next year. Earlier on this season, it said Marcus Rashford was preparing to open contract talks with Manchester United. Marcus Rashford receives £200,000 a week. PSG are still in for him, by the way, and earlier on this season, Barcelona went in for him. 
Rashford has been part of the club for a long time. He came up our academy. He's been a United player since the age of seven. And he broke into our senior squad back in 2016. Manchester United have got Anthony Alanga. Now, Anthony Alanga looks a very good asset for the first team squad. He's made quite a few first team appearances now. Um, Ilanga, of course, played against West Ham the other week. He played very, very well in that game. You know, he was skillful, he got into good positions, made some good runs. Ilanga also played well in the 3-1 win against Brentford. He scored his first goal of the season in that game. He played very well in the 2-2 draw against Aston Villa earlier on this season. Had a couple of chances in that game. Earlier on this season, I heard that Ilanga could be going out on loan to a championship club, but Rangnick wants to keep him. Anthony Alanga has been part of the club for a long time. He risen up our academy, he joined Man United's academy at the age of 12, and he's now, what, the age of 19. Revert back towards the end of last year, Anthony Alanga committed his future to the club because he signed a new contract with Man United until June 2026. There's an option of a further year. Uh, obviously, Mason Greenwood was a good player as well, but obviously he's not at Man United now because, like I said earlier on, he's been suspended. Um, obviously, we've got the best player in the world overall in Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, reports from Spain said not so long ago that Cristiano Ronaldo wants to return to Real Madrid. Uh, before Cristiano Ronaldo endured like nine and a half years at Real Madrid, that's before he went to Juventus. And not so long ago, Cristiano Ronaldo asked his agent, George Mendes, to find him another club because quite clearly Ronaldo is unhappy at Manchester United. Uh, Ronaldo did play against West Ham the other week, to be fair, he did well, but prior to the game, he was a doubt because Ronaldo picked up a neck injury, but obviously recovered from that neck injury. Ronaldo's had a few injuries since he re-signed for the club. Hasn't he? Um, it said Ronaldo will leave Man United in the summer. If they fail to qualify for the Champions League, well, it says Ronaldo faces a 25% pay cut should Manchester United fail to qualify for the Champions League. Don't forget, Ronaldo was furious for being substituted against Brentford, but Ralph Rangnick defended his decision to substitute Ronaldo against Brentford. A couple of weeks ago, Ronaldo gave an interview and he was very critical of the youngsters. So reflecting on that, he was demanding more from the youngsters and Ronaldo said that Ralph Rangnick will do a good job at Man United. And Ronaldo also said that I'm not a Man United to compete for 6th or 7th. He said finishing below 3rd is unacceptable. Man United re-signed Ronaldo last summer for £20 million with add-ons included. He wears a number seven shirt, and Ronaldo's under contract with Man United until 2023. There's an option of a further year. Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Man United at the moment. Ronaldo scored 14 goals since he re-signed. He's got over 800 goals in his career. Uh, we have got Jadon Sancho. Now, Jadon Sancho hasn't been that good. He's done nowhere near as well as a lot of Manchester United fans expected, but he does take some players' time to settle in. Revert back to when we had Solskjaer, we couldn't get the best out of Sancho because Solskjaer persistently played him out of position. And there was quite a few games Sancho didn't even play in under Solskjaer. I think the best game Sancho's enjoyed since he signed for the club was the games against Chelsea and Villarreal away because he scored in both of them games. 
To be fair, he did well in the 3-1 win against Burnley, but unfortunately, he was denied a goal in that game. Sancho has missed the last couple of games due to personal reasons. Sancho did endure four good years at Borussia Dortmund before he signed for Man United. Man United got Sancho in a deal worth £78 million, with add-ons included. Manchester United paid £73 million up front. Sancho's got a contract with the club until June 2026 as an option of a further year. Uh, Man United have also got Juan Mata. Now, obviously Juan Mata lost his place in the team a while ago. And he's lost that yard of pace and he's aging up. But despite that, you know, Juan Mata has had a good career at Manchester United. He's made 276 appearances in all competitions and he's scored 51 goals. And he's been at Manchester United for eight years. So reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. Manchester United got Matt from Chelsea back in 2014. Man United paid £37.1 million. Uh, like I said, we've got Lingard. Not good enough, doesn't get in the team. Hopefully he can leave before this transfer window closes, but Man United still may have to wait until the summer to offload Lingard. Uh, we've got Paul Pogba. Paul Popper's a good player. He's not only a good player, he's an imperative player as well. The good news is from a Man United perspective that Paul Popper is set to return after this international break. Rangnick confirmed that earlier on this season. Popper was out with injury for a while. I initially thought Popper was going to be leaving, but now there's been... A U-turn, like I've updated you already, it said Paul Popper is willing to stay at Manchester United as long as Ralph Rangnick is manager next season. Popper has been impressed with Ralph Rangnick since his arrival. Popper's open to signing a new contract. Popper's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Revert back to the other month, the Sun said that Manchester United offered Paul Popper a new £500,000 a week contract. That would have made Popper the highest paid player in Premier League history, but Popper actually came out and denied that he'd been offered that contract. This season is Popper's sixth season at Manchester United since he re-signed. He's won three trophies at the club so far. He's played 212 times and he's scored 38 times. Manchester United paid £89 million for Popper, so reflecting on that is our most expensive signing at the moment. And we had Popper when he was a lot younger under the Ferguson era, but had to let him go due to limited appearances. Uh, we've got Bruno Fernandes now. Bruno Fernandes is one of our best players and he's certainly one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, though, I don't think he was too good against West Ham the other week. But Fernandez was very good in the games against Brentford and Villa in the league because Fernandez got two assists against Brentford and he scored two goals against Aston Villa. They're probably the best two games Fernandez has enjoyed so far this season because Fernandez, let's be honest, has enjoyed a lot of poor games this season. Earlier on this season, the Athletic said that Bruno Fernandes rejected a contract from Manchester United. Uh, Bruno Fernandes' contract talks are postponed until the summer, having turned down an offer last year. It says Bruno Fernandes wants similar money to the top earners at the club. Fernandes receives £100,000 a week at the moment. Um, He's under contract to Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. Fernandez has been a Manchester United player for two years. Got him from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. We also have Fred. Um, I don't think Fred is good enough to represent the club. But Fred has had his good games 
this season, don't get me wrong. But he's had a lot of poor games as well. Manchester United got Fred a few years ago from Shakhtar Donetsk, got him for £50 million. Uh, Man United have also got Scott McTominay. To be honest with you, he's been our best performer under Rangnick. Uh, McTominay weren't great against West Ham the other week, but he played very well in the game against Brentford. He was involved in the build-up to two of the goals against Brentford. He played very well in the cup game against Villa as well, got man of the match. He only scored... The only goal of that game against Philly was a header. Uh, he missed the 2 2 draw against Philly in the league due to suspension. Uh, McTominay played very well against Burnley last year, Old Trafford. Scored in that game. He played very well away at Norwich last year and he played well against Leeds on the opening day of the season. McTominay's been part of the club for a long time. Revert back to 2020. McTominay signed a five-year contract with Man United, so reflecting on that, he committed his future to the club. We've also got Matic, um, not good enough to represent the club. I've always had my reservations about Matic because he's always been a static midfielder, plus he's ageing up. But despite all of that, he's had his good games at Manchester United. There's a good chance Matic will be departing the club this year. Matic is out of contract at Manchester United in the summer. Manchester United got Matic from Chelsea back in 2017. Manchester United got him for £40 million. We've got Alex Tellez. You know, that's a very, very good left-back. I hope he stays at Man United this year. Tellez is our first-choice left-back under Rangnick. Tellez played well against West Ham the other week. He was very energetic, very creative. He weren't too good against Brentford, but in the game against Brentford, he still put some dangerous crosses into the box. Uh, the reason Manchester United brought Tellez in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. Earlier on this season, Tellez had injury. Man United got Tellez from Porto back in 2020. Man United got him for 15 points. Four million. Uh, we've got Luke Shaw. That's a good left back overall. But Luke Shaw's enjoyed a lot, a lot of poor games this season, and I'm shocked in that aspect because revert back to last season, Luke Shaw was very, very good. Uh, Luke Shaw thinks out with injury at the moment. He had a couple of injuries earlier on this season. Shaw is injury prone which is a concern. Shaw's been at Manchester United for eight years, so he's been a long-serving player. Uh, Shaw was our first-choice left-back when we had Solskjaer. Uh, we've got Harry Maguire. Um, Harry Maguire is not good enough to represent the club. Man United are looking to sell him in the summer. Uh, Maguire had a minor injury not so long ago. He had... A calf injury earlier on this season and he had ligament damage in his ankle towards the end of last season. So he sustained a few injuries. Harry Maguire certainly wasn't worth the £80 million that Manchester United paid for him. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive signing at the club. Uh, we've got Raphael Varane, to be fair. Raphael Varane is a very, very good centre-half. Uh, most of the time when he plays, he seems to make the difference. Doesn't he? I thought Varane played very well against West Ham the other week. And he played well in the game against Brentford. They're probably the best two games he's enjoyed since he come back from that hamstring injury. Varane's had two injuries since he signed for the club. Uh, Varane is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a good pedigree behind him. Look at the amount of trophies he won at Real Madrid. Manchester United got Varane for £41 million with add-ons included. He's got a contract with Man United until 2025 as an option of a further year. Uh, we've got Phil Jones. Um, 
Phil Jones doesn't get in the team, does he? Um, he played in the game against Wolves at Old Trafford earlier on this season because Maguire picked up an injury. Jones was our best player against Wolves at Old Trafford. That was his first Premier League appearance since January 2020. Jones is leaving Man United, by the way. Uh, reports in France have said that Jones is set to join Bordeaux on loan until the end of the season. It said Phil Jones talks are at final stages. Did you know that Phil Jones is only the outfield player that's still with us from the Ferguson era? This season is his 11th season at Man United, so reflecting on that, he's been a very long-serving player. At one point, he was out with an injury for a while. His contract at Man United expires next year. Uh, we've got Eric Bailly. You know, he's also a very good centre-half, but Bailly's injury prone, which is a concern. He doesn't get in the team much. Bailly's been at the African Cup of Nations. The last game he played for Manchester United was the game against Burnley last year, but he came off injured in that one. Revert back to earlier on in this window, uh, De Marzio said that Bailly agreed to join AC Milan on loan. Back in April last year, Bailly signed a new contract with Man United until 2024, didn't he? Been at Man United since 2016, got him from Villarreal. Manchester United paid £30 million for him. We've also got Victor Lindelof. Um, he's not good enough to represent the club. Uh, we need to consider offloading him this year. Um, Lindelof has played a lot of games alongside Maguire. He's played some games alongside Varane. He's played games alongside Bailly. Lindelof missed the game against West Ham due to personal reasons. If you do remember rightly, Lindelof's house got robbed. Lindelof's under contract with Man United till 2024. Man United got Lindelof from Benfica back in 2017, paid £31 million for him. Uh, we've got Diego Delor. Um He's our first choice right back under Rangnick. Um, he's been impressive this season, especially under Rangnick. He's been subjected to transfer speculation before, don't forget, last season. Dallo had a loan spell with AC Milan, so reflecting on that, he gained some experience. Man United got Dallo from Porto for £19 million, brought him in under the Jose Mourinho era. Dallo's contract at Man United expires next year. Um, and Wan Basaka, he's not good enough to represent the club. Man United are looking to sell him. In the summer. Um, he's been out with COVID recently. Uh, Basaka is good defensively, but the attacking side of his game lets him down. You know, this season's his third full season at Man United. Man United got Basaka from Crystal Palace. We got him for £50 million. And obviously... Our first choice goalkeeper is De Gea. De Gea's been sensational this season. He's now back to his best. Earlier on this season, De Gea said he's planning to spend many more years at Manchester United. You know, he's already been a long servant. You know, this season is his 11th season at Man United. He's been with us since the Ferguson era. De Gea's contract at Man United expires next year. Uh, De Gea receives £375,000 per week. Second highest earner at the club. De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. Revert back to last summer, he reclaimed the number one spot back as he did decide to cut short his holiday by two weeks. Obviously, our second choice keeper is Henderson. He's a good keeper, he's Henderson, but Man United need to offload him because Henderson doesn't get in goal now. Henderson's only made two appearances this season. Earlier on this season, he was out with COVID for a while. And um, obviously, our third choice goalkeeper is Tom Heaton. Um, obviously, got Tom Heaton on a free transfer from Aston Villa last summer. We've got another goalkeeper called Lee Grant. As far as I know, he's only made one appearance.
So there you go. Ralph Rangnick has been Manchester United's interim manager for almost two months. He's had five wins from eight league games so far. And he's only lost one game. Rangnick has managed 10 games in all competitions and he has progressed Manchester United to the fourth round of the FA Cup. Man United play Middlesbrough in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Earlier on this week, it said Manchester United put their search for a new manager on hold after being impressed by Ralph Rangnick since he took charge in December. So Man United are considering offering Rangnick the job on a permanent basis. You know, Rangnick is our interim manager till the end of the season, and it did initially say that Rangnick would continue in a consultancy role for a further two years. There's been good performances under Rangnick. There's also been poor performances as well. Uh, Rangnick apparently will receive a £500,000 bonus if he leads Man United to a top four finish. Uh, Rangnick earns £180,000 a week. Reflecting on the win against West Ham the other week, that moved Manchester United into the top four. I'm hoping as well Rangnick can win a trophy this season because Man United have not won a trophy since 2017. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. Revert back to earlier on this season, he said that Ralph Rangnick was under pressure and it said he was already losing the Man United dressing room and it said 17 Manchester United players were unhappy and wanted to leave. Uh, Man United changed formation under Rangnick. Our new formation is the 4-3-3 formation. That formation seems to suit our standards under Rangnick. Obviously, the 4 triple 2 formation got scrapped because quite clearly that formation wasn't working. Rangnick's brought three additions in. Um, obviously, earlier on this season, he brought Ewan Sharp in as an assistant coach and analyst. He brought Chris Armas in as an assistant coach and he brought Saz Chalens in as a sports psychologist. Before Manchester United, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Locomotive Moscow. Manchester United have sat four permanent managers since Fergie retired. You know, we sat David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho and last year Manchester United sat Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So Man United are looking for the fifth permanent manager since Ferguson. So anyway guys, I'll be on with more videos tomorrow. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again soon.